biggest cultural icon to ever play the game of baseball was known by many names. The Great Bambino, the Colossus of Clout, the Sultan of Swat, the Maharaja of Mash, the King of Crash, the King of Swing, the Terrible Titan, the Jovial Giant, the Home Run King. But most know George Herman Ruth as the Babe. Babe Ruth was arguably the greatest baseball player of all time, but his legacy was not made solely through sport. Babe Ruth transcended baseball and became a figure bigger than the sport itself, transforming himself into an American icon. Between the legends of his called home run to the curse of the Bambino, Babe Ruth became more than a man and affected the popular culture of America. When one conjures up an image of Babe Ruth, many different things may come to mind, whether it be smacking a long home run over the wall of Yankee Stadium, calling a shot in Game 3 of the 1932 World Series at Wrigley Field, posing next to fellow Murderer's Row member Lou Ironhorse Gehrig, or simply giving the fans his infamous wink. Images of Ruth came to define not only the game of baseball, but an era. George Herman Ruth Jr. was born February 6, 1895 in Baltimore, Maryland. He was one of eight children born of George Sr. and Kate, but only George Jr. and his sister Mamie lived. I hardly knew my parents is all that George could, would say about his genealogy. When asked about his childhood, he would be brief, only stating that I had a rotten start and it took me a long time to get my bearings. George Jr. had a troubled childhood, and his parents, realizing he needed a stricter environment to grow up in while they were busy working, quickly enrolled George Jr. in St. Mary's Industrial School for Boys. There is where he learned to love and excel at the game of baseball, helping shape him into the eventual legend that he would become. Ruth learned to play the game after he found a father figure in Brother Matthias, a monk, at St. Mary's. Brother Matthias taught George the finer points of the game of baseball, refining his pitching, hitting, and fielding. Ruth was such a natural that the monks invited the Baltimore Orioles owner, Jack Dunn, to come and watch him play. After watching Ruth play for less than an hour, Dunn was quick to sign the young man to a contract. Being only 19 at the time, Dunn had to become Ruth's legal guardian to complete the contract. After performing well for the Orioles, he quickly gained a reputation as a very talented pitching prospect, which led to his sale to the Boston Red Sox in 1914. After Ruth signed with the Orioles, his teammates took to calling him Jack's newest babe, and from then on the nickname stuck with Ruth, becoming the name for which he is most famous. After his sale to Boston from the Baltimore Orioles, Babe Ruth appeared in five games for the Red Sox and won his first Major League game on July 11, 1914. Even though he was initially successful, the Red Sox roster was full and Ruth was sent down to the minor league team, the Providence Grays, where he helped lead them to the International League pennant. The following season, Ruth was a full-time member of the Red Sox pitching rotation and put together a solid season going 18-8 with an earned run average of 2.44. Ruth's breakout season came in 1916, the following season, when he led the league with a 1.75 ERA, a 23-12 record, and an astonishing 35 complete games for only 38 starts. In 1917, Ruth continued his stellar pitching going 24-13 with a 2.01 ERA, but the most important aspect of this season came from Ruth's solid hitting. He became a good enough hitter in limited at-bats to where the team decided to turn him into an everyday player. This decision came with immediate results the following season when Ruth hit 11 home runs, which tied for the Major League lead. The following season, Babe Ruth began to change the game of baseball forever. Before 1919, baseball was a game of dominant pitching and the strongest hitters were ones that could bat for a high batting average. This era is now known as the dead ball era. Babe Ruth almost single-handedly changed the game and effectively ended the dead ball era by smashing 29 home runs and breaking the all-time single season home run record. Little did Ruth know this was to be the last season he would suit up for the Boston Red Sox. On December 19, 1919, the owner of the Red Sox, Harry Frazee, sold Babe Ruth to the New York Yankees for $100,000. The common legend regarding the trade is that the sale of Ruth was to finance Frazee's other endeavors, namely a Broadway play called No No Nanette. The truth about the trade is much more complicated than this urban legend. The reasoning behind the trade was monetary, but it stemmed from a demand by Ruth to have his salary increased to $20,000 which would have doubled his salary from the previous year. Frazee was either unable or unwilling to meet his demand, which led to Ruth threatening to sit out until his demands were met, even going as far as to retire and pursue other profitable ventures. Frazee decided to trade Babe Ruth, and the first team to come calling were the Chicago White Sox and the New York Yankees. The Chicago White Sox, who had recently gone through their infamous Black Sox scandal, offered Shoeless Joe Jackson and $60,000 to the Red Sox. But Frazee instead insisted on a full cash payment and settled on the New York Yankees' offer of $100,000. Ruth quickly signed a new contract with New York and settled in with his new life as a Yankee. This trade will go down as the most lopsided trade in the history of baseball and will drastically change the two organizations involved forever. 
Babe Ruth started his New York Yankee career in 1920 by having arguably the greatest season that a hitter had ever had. That year, Ruth hit an astonishing Major League record of 54 home runs and batted 376. Ruth also was able to have a slugging percentage of 847, which was a record that was held until 2001. The following season, Ruth had the best season of his career. He set the Major League record with 59 home runs, as well as setting the Major League record for total bases, extra base hits, and times on base. Ruth's most dramatic achievement in the 1921 season was to lead the Yankees to their first ever league championship. After a disappointing 1922 season, the Yankees made the decision to leave their stadium, the Polo Grounds, and move into their new Yankee Stadium, which was dubbed the house that Ruth built. Ruth settled into this new stadium well, almost winning the Triple Crown in 1924, but then suffering from a mysterious stomach ailment which left him unable to swing correctly in 1925, he accumulated his worst statistics of his Yankee career. The public apparently accepted the official explanation that his illness was the result of influenza and indigestion. The real cause, it appears, was a serious case of syphilis. One well-known sports writer called it the stomach ache heard around the world. The Babe quickly rebounded the following year to lead the Yankees to the American League pennant and into the World Series against the St. Louis Cardinals, although the Yankees were ultimately defeated in seven games. The next season for the New York Yankees is arguably the greatest collection of hitters ever assembled in one lineup. Led by Ruth and the young first baseman Lou Gehrig, this 1927 team became known as the Murderer's Row for the way that they killed opposing pitchers. They also won more games than any team in history and charged toward the World Series where they defeated the Pirates in four straight games to collect the World Series title. The 1927 season was also a special one for Babe Ruth. He broke his previous home run record by hitting an incredible 60 home runs, a record that would not be matched for 37 years until another Yankee, Roger Maris, would hit 61, although he played an extra eight games in Ruth. The following year, Ruth would have another solid season and led his team to another World Series title, this time exacting revenge on the St. Louis Cardinals, who had upset them in 1926. In 1929, the Yankees and Ruth failed to make the World Series for the first time in four years, and failed to get back to the following three. Ruth still kept up his astonishing numbers, leading the league in home runs between 1929 and 1931. The Yankees eventually made it back to the World Series to face the Chicago Cubs in 1932. The Yankees easily swept the Cubs and one of baseball's defining moments occurred when Ruth hit his famous called shot. Ruth stayed productive in 1933 and 1934. He played in the first and second All-Star games and hit the game's first home run. Ruth eventually hit his 700th home run, one of the main personal milestones that he had strived to achieve during his career, and remained the all-time leading home run hitter until Henry Aaron broke the rec record hitting his 715th home run in 1974. Babe Ruth knew his time as a player was growing short, so he decided to pursue a career in managing a major league team, where the Yankees sold him to the Boston Braves to pursue this desire. Ruth played for the Boston Braves for only part of the 1934 season. His health had deteriorated and his performance suffered. After this partial season, Ruth announced his retirement from the game of baseball. In 1934, the Major League All-Star team, including Babe Ruth, went on a tour of Japan to promote the game of baseball. The ball players were received with a hero's welcome by the Japanese as over 500,000 roaring fans showed up to welcome them, with Babe Ruth being the biggest crowd pleaser. He proceeded to hit 13 home runs in 18 games and helped electrify the crowd. The short tour revolutionized the game of baseball in Japan and led to the continued popularity of the sport. It was named as the Babe Ruth Effect. This led to the first Japanese professional team forming, the Yomiuri Giants, and they still exist to this day. Babe Ruth became a popular figure in Japan and even became somewhat of an ambassador of the game, even gaining a statue in his honor. The Babe Ruth League was formed in 1951 for children aged 13 to 15. Over 50 years after its inception, the league is still going strong and now boasts over 886,500 players across 7,300 leagues and has seen numerous players develop into Major League and Hall of Fame players. On October 1, 1932, the New York Yankees were facing the Chicago Cubs at Wrigley Field for Game 3 of the World Series. The Yankees were leading two games to none over the Cubs heading into this game and the Chicago stands were packed with over 50,000 spectators. The Cubs fans had been getting raucous and even went as far as to begin throwing objects at Ruth during warm-ups. Needless to say, tensions were running high. Ruth, in his first at bat, drives a long three-run home run into the bleachers to take the lead on the Cubs. They soon came roaring back to tie the game at 
Ruth steps up to the plate for a second plate appearance and runs the count to a 2-2 ball strike count. The babe steps back in for the fourth pitch but quickly steps back out and looks and gestures towards deep center field. The pitch is thrown and Babe Ruth had hit to deep center field, what some say was the longest home run in the history of Wrigley Stadium, effectively calling the home run that he hit. While many refute the claim that he called the shot and that he was only pointing to the pitching mound, the legend will always serve to increase the mysticism and legacy of Babe Ruth. In 1926, the Yankees were playing in the World Series against the St. Louis Cardinals, where a man named Sylvester reached out to the Yankees organization informing them that his son had a rare blood disease and he hoped that the Yankees could do something to help lift his spirits. By Game 3, Babe had heard about the story of Johnny Sylvester and makes a promise that in the next game he will hit a home run for him. The next day, Babe Ruth not only hits one home run, but a total of three. After the season, Babe reached out to Sylvester and visited him often in the hospital, where he eventually recovered. The Babe Ruth Museum, on the 40th anniversary of the event, reached out to Johnny Sylvester to corroborate the story. The proof that they needed was presented to them with a ball in Ruth's handwriting stating, I'll knock a homer for you in Wednesday's game, Babe Ruth. After the sale of Babe Ruth to the New York Yankees in 1919 to fund Frazee's Broadway production, the Red Sox suffered through a terrible championship drought. Boston had previously won five out of the first 15 championships, with Ruth pitching the team to titles in 1916 and 1918. It took the team another 86 years to finally win another World Series. The team failed to win any championships till 2004, although the team had made it to four other World Series, losing all four in devastating fashion in seven games, including what many consider to be the harshest loss in World Series history, when a routine ground ball slipped through first baseman Bill Buckner's glove, leading to the winning runs for the Mets in Game 6 of the 1986 World Series, which led to the team losing in Game 7. No matter the achievement on the field, Babe became a fan favorite by the sheer bigness of his affable personality, and even his inability to curb his overwhelming appetites. Most Americans seemed to tolerate at least some of his indulgences of their big boy. Ruth loved to spend his money and had a horrible gambling habit. He loved expensive and fancy clothes. His interest in sex seemed limitless, and he frequented the better brothels even while in training or on tour with the ball club. His gluttony became equally legendary. He often overate and overdrank to the point of actual severe physical illness. Like so many celebrities in our modern mechanized age, Ruth's frequent illness, physical collapse, even hospitalization became almost routine. Whether it be swatting a long home run, drinking to excess, or spending time with a sick child, no man had captivated America in the way that the babe did. From his legends and statistics to his flaws and charity work, no sports figure has transcended a sport like Babe. George Herman Ruth went from being a poor boy in Baltimore to becoming the face of a nation.